Okay, so uh, I think we all had a great time with the roundtable discussions. I saw a lot of really in-depth discussions going on, and this afternoon we're going to close out with our closing keynote speaker. Uh, a few months back, I actually um, heard from Jesse and uh, the people at Credit Sesame saying, hey, we would like to come to CardCon and speak. And I was very flattered because Credit Sesame, of course, is a leader in this field. Uh, last night, I had the opportunity to introduce Jesse Levy to Clark Howard. And Clark Howard immediately uh, shook his hand and said, wow, what you've done is great uh, in making people's uh, credit scores more accessible to them. You know, one thing I always say is that, and I've written this many times, is that credit uh, and credit scores are difficult to understand and for the general public, but that's actually kind of on purpose, because as we know, the credit scoring formulas are a trade secret. Um, so it's our duty as writers to, to try to bring as much clarity as we can uh, to that field. So uh, Jesse's going to be talking about personal credit management. Uh, are those chairs as comfortable as they look? Very All right, well, come on up here. Yeah. Great to have Jesse Levy, president of Credit Sesame. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, so uh, today what we're gonna talk a little bit about is personal credit management, which is the future of personal finance. Uh, and there's been something that all of us have missed about personal finance over the last several years, uh, and that's particularly as it relates to credit. And we're gonna dig in deeper uh, on that. And I'm gonna pause it at the beginning here. How many of you are fans of Dave Ramsey? Anybody? Good. So uh, we're gonna talk about why uh, uh, people like Dave Ramsey who've been preaching at us have actually done a real disservice to many Americans who are struggling, who need help, and uh, we, can, we can fix that today, right here, right now. So, what is personal credit management? Let's, let's start off with that. So, uh, first, we, the, start, the industry started off in the credit space, uh, particularly in personal credit, by giving people access to their credit. Uh, that started with credit scores. Uh, credit Karma was the first to give uh, free credit scores uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, credit Sesame was the first to give credit report information uh, to a mass um, population, credit monitoring, uh, credit kind of access to your credit information. Uh, and that includes scores, report, monitoring, um, and you know, additional trade line data, et cetera. That's all access. That's kind of the first phase. And now, as we know, that has become a commodity. There are so many different places you can get a free credit score from Credit Sesame, Credit Karma, from your bu the bureaus, from your bank. You can get a credit score in so many different locations. It has really become a commodity, which is good. That's a good thing. Um, and has created more demand and interest in credit than we've ever seen before. And so once people have access to their credit information, what do, what do they want to do? They get this credit score, they see the information, it's confusing. You know, as Jason said, credit score and credit reports were not built for consumers, they were built uh, for the banks. And so what people want next is they want to understand their credit and they want to improve it. And this is really the number one thing that people want, and we're, we can dig into a little bit more detail on t as to why. And so really understanding your credit is not an easy thing. And, and there's plenty of content that exists that will generically say, this is what credit means, these are diff different components of credit, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But there's very few places that you can go that will actually break down your individual credit and tell you this is what this means about you, and this is how you compare to other people, and these are the specific actions that you can take in order to improve your credit. But because of you know, advanced analytics and machine learning, we now have the ability with millions of credit records to be able to pinpoint specific actions that individuals take and how that will impact their credit score in the short term and the long term. And that ultimately is what consumers are really looking for. Once people have, uh, they understand their credit, they've improved it, now what they want to do is they want to leverage it. They want to use their credit. They want to get a new credit card to maximize their rewards. They want to do a balance transfer. They want to 
get a personal loan, to consolidate their debt, they want to buy a car, buy a home, all of the things that um, we know, um, but it's really a continuum, and if you skip the understand and improve, you miss a big opportunity. Finally, people uh, have access to their credit, they understand it, they've improved it, they started leveraging it, now they want to protect it. And this is personal credit management. And this is a huge market. We're going to talk a little bit more about what this means. But this end-to-end -end credit management platform uh, has turned out to be just an enormous uh, need in the US population, uh, as well as a big business opportunity. So um, this is on, on, the, uh, on your left. These are Credit Sesame members. When they sign up and we ask them, what are you here for? What are your goals? And what we found is actually 91% of people sign up for Credit Sesame to improve their credit score. That's it, that's 91%. And you can see that it does drop off a little bit for people who have a credit score over 750, but even there it's over 60%. Over 60% of people who have a credit score of 750 or better, their number one goal is still to improve their credit. And we'll go into some of the reasons on, on why that is, and, and you can see over on the right, uh, Discover commissioned a, uh, a study uh, that looked at, well, what is it that people you know, are looking to do with their credit score? And actually, 61% of Americans and 87% of Gen Z and 83% of millennials are actively trying to improve their credit score. They're actively working on it. That's 153 million people today are already trying to improve their credit score. And the tools that exist out there are, are pretty limited, as I think we, we have seen, uh, reading content, trying to piece together 12 different things about your credit and understand how that applies to you um, versus taking a, a, a data approach to be able to use the data and leverage the data in more advanced ways to be able to help people improve their credit. So uh, this shows the size of, uh, of the demand. And then if you think about the market opportunity, You've got 250 million Americans over the age of 18. Uh, the average credit score is about 675, depends on what credit scoring model you're using. So, you know, average American is subprime, which means that of those, there's even a higher percentage of people who are looking to improve their credit. And then if you look at the factors, these are the factors that, you know, are generally accepted. There's a lot of nuance that I can tell you having looked at millions of records of, of credit data to understand what is it that drives the credit score and credit decisioning. Um, but in a broad spectrum, these five categories apply. Credit usage, account mix, inquiries, payment, and age. And 55% of those are related to how you get credit, right, inquiries. So being able to, to get credit with fewer inquiries uh, will improve your, will help you with your credit score. The types of credit that you've acquired, what is your account mix, what are the different types of credit that you have uh, on, on your credit report, and how you use your credit, your utilization. So those things all relate back to getting a new loan or how you've gotten your loan or how you're using uh, the credit that you have, and that becomes a, an $87 billion business opportunity to help people find those loans, and that's only on 55% of their credit. Uh, that, so it's just an enormous, enormous opportunity if you look at um, the overall market. So why is it that we've gotten things so wrong? Why have we been, been uh, missing this opportunity? Why have people missed this opportunity for so many years? Well, you think about somebody here, this is, a, this is uh, Molly, which is a, a typical uh, Credit Sesame user, and by the way, typical um, American a credit score of 620, who has $28,000 in student debt, a $17,000 in credit card debt, and an annual income of $32,000. Now, what would Dave Ramsey say to Molly? Cut up, your cut up your, well, yeah, cut up your credit card, tighten your belt, right? And, and, and actually, you, you cut up your credit card, it's gonna be the worst thing you can do for your credit score, right? Tighten your belt, live within your means, start paying down your credit, yeah, stop spending, all of these things. Molly's trying to get by. She's trying to live, she's gotta pay rent, she's gotta get to work, she needs a car, she's got bills to pay, she's gotta eat, and she has this 
mountain of debt that she's trying to pay down. And the advice that our, we have been preaching at her and many others, uh, and the personal financial management PFM tools that exist out there have been telling her to do something that she literally can't do, which is, yeah, live within your means, tighten your belt, get on a budget, pay down your debt. So what, what should Molly do? She can't, she can't do these things, but what she can do is she can improve her credit score. And if you take millions of credit records and you apply it to Molly's situation and you use advanced data analytics and machine learning to give her specific and actionable recommendations about her own credit situation and what she can do to improve her credit score, she could imp change, improve her credit score from 620 to 720 in a short amount of time, which would mean she could do things that would enable her to pay down her debt, like balance transfer, debt consolidation, et cetera, that will lower her rates, allow her monthly payment to be more manageable, and then she could start getting her personal financial house in order. But in many ways, we've put the cart before the horse. If you get your credit in order and you improve your credit, that's gonna enable you to do all of these other things. Um, but most of our personal financial management tools and um, many ex so-called experts have been preaching at people to do those things first and it's simply not possible. And this is a huge opportunity uh, because people have been underserved and this is a growing, uh, growing market. And uh, so I'm really excited about the opportunity to help people like Molly. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how to, uh, personal credit mon management, how uh, to leverage, how to improve the experience of leveraging your credit, of getting a new loan. So the current process, given kind of where our technology has gone, is pretty antiquated. Um, consumers don't understand necessarily that it's not just about your score, but about all of the underlying things that are uh, on your credit report. Uh, there are so many different credit scoring models, so uh, while there has been significantly more access to credit information, that doesn't necessarily mean that people can make better decisions on what loans to get because credit score is just one data point and there's many scoring models and you have no idea if the bank that you're applying to is even using the scoring model that you have. Um, and often people don't understand that. Criteria vary, obviously, from lender to lender, from different, uh, different types of products, uh, have very different underwriting criteria, um, and many of the factors are opaque. We can't even, uh, that nobody will tell you what they are. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get some insight, um, but it isn't until you have millions of records and you can start digging under the hood that you can actually see what is driving a lending decision. And when people are denied and they get a, an adverse action letter that says, you know, you were denied for, uh, for this loan, those reasons to average U.S. consumer don't make sense and they're hard to understand. And so here is another opportunity to break down barriers and help, uh, help people to better understand what things, um, what, what uh, a better experience can be. So again, through data, through using millions of records, we can break down those barriers and use all of that data to be able to personalize the experience for somebody around what they are likely to qualify for what the terms of that product are likely to be, and, by the way, tying that back to their credit, if they got this new product, this new loan, this new credit card, what would likely their credit score be? And how would that change over time? And we have all of the data to be able to do uh, these models and make these projections. Um, all that we need is approval from compliance and legal and other, uh, others of our, our favorite friends. So that's uh, how, to, how to simulate the models. Um, additionally, we can create a better user experience. In fact, at many, at Credit Sesame and others, we already have the credit data. 
So rather than having to even go through an approval process uh, where we try to predict what's likely to happen, we can take our data, the underlying data that we already have from a credit report and run it through an underwriting model and come back with a decision. It's kind of a prequal on steroids uh, that can give people some certainty up front without having to apply, without having to go through the process, without having to pull credit again, that allows us to use the data that we have from personal credit management, combining that with the data from our lenders and the underwriting models to show real live offers to consumers. And this has many benefits. First, for consumers, they're not gonna be applying for things that they, they don't qualify for. They're not gonna get approved without knowing that the terms are something that, is, that they would actually accept. Same with lenders. Lenders are now not paying to pull credit for consumers who are unlikely to be approved and paying to pull credit for consumers who are not likely to take a loan because the, the terms are not gonna be what, uh, what they want. And so a better, a better integration creates you know, positive momentum for all. Uh, and that's where the better user experience uh, can come into play. And, by the way, and I think Chase just came out with some, uh, something similar to this, that this can enable uh, many lenders to offer better products, right? If you know that people are actively managing their credit, you've seen that they have improved, you now can offer them customized experience, customized products, giving them better rates, more rewards, whatever the case may be, based on their own situation, and as their credit changes over time, you can make sure that you're getting ahead of the game so that somebody doesn't take their business elsewhere because you see that their credit has improved. You can automatically uh, uh, reduce their rates. You can automatically give them bonuses and rewards. And we have all of the information uh, to do that. We have all of the data. The only thing keeping us is our own, our own imagination. And uh, we're already starting to see this happen in the market. I would expect that there's gonna be even more of it. Um, but people who are part of the personal credit management movement, which, again, is 61%, 153 million people. It's a huge number of people already. Uh, that th this is a huge opportunity to uh, be able to do business with those, uh, those consumers. So if you think about um, you know, why this is attractive, uh, again, for, on the consumer side, uh, you have you know, a virtual instant funding, right? So you can, in one click, basically you can get access uh, to capital, which can help you to reduce your debt load. It can create more certainty. It's bought back to Molly, who, after she improved her credit, now she wants to start paying down her debt and she needs a new product to do that. And by doing all the work in the background, you can actually find her that product. Without doing the work, it can be very difficult for her to find the exact pro product. There's no shopping, no hard inquiries, uh, and, and you feel like you're getting rewarded uh, for, for the, the hard work that you're doing on improving, improving your credit. And if 61% of Americans are working actively to improve their credit score, they wanna feel like the banks are noticing, and this is our opportunity to do it. Lenders have a great uh, experience. Uh, a, um, they, they can, they're able to give something exclusive um, since almost nobody is doing this right now, this is an opportunity to go out and win the market and make things easier for people and allow people uh, to get through a process faster. Um, and there's less risk of consumers looking elsewhere, right? If you've, you have your customers, you can see that they're improving their credit score to be able to give them a customized product. That allows you to move faster. And finally, you can reduce your costs, right, by giving, you know, it's much more cost effective to keep the customers that you already have and keeping them happy and giving them really customized, targeted uh, offers creates a uh, great opportunity for people. So, again, we can see that streamlining our lending process by using the data that already exists, showing people loans that they already are approved for without having to go through uh, Prequal and others, uh, we can get grow our business. We can get fewer delinquencies by attracting customers that are actively managing their credit, and you get better loyalty. Uh, big opportunity for all, and uh, we really see this as the future. And if you think about where where else we can share data, we can. Uh, we have um, already, and there are other models out there that predict approval odds, right? We have 
millions of records. That's an easy way to show consumers likelihood that they'll be approved or declined. Um, and that, that can allow us also to show people who should go through a prequal experience, making recommendations to people about when they should go through prequal, when they shouldn't go through prequal. Um, it, give, it allows them to, we can allow people to prefill their applications, right? We have all the data, it's very easy to just pass that along. The application is completely prefilled. And we can figure out with relative certainty how applying for a new product, how getting a new product, how paying off an old product will impact a credit score, which ultimately is what people want to know. When we talk to consumers about what makes you apply for a credit card, and this is, is, is often um, maybe counterintuitive to some people who are more in a uh, credit card, um, you know, in, in a prime category, is number one, I want to know, am I going to be approved? Number two, I want to know, how is this going to impact my credit score? And is it going to improve it? Is it going to decline it? Is it going to have um, no change? And what will happen over time to my credit score? And that uh, is a real advantage that exists in the market today because of this proliferation of all of the credit data that's out there. Um, and finally, Personal credit management is, we're just at the beginning. We're just seeing kind of the early stages of what personal credit management can do. And you can think of a future state where uh, getting a loan is as easy as a, going to an ATM machine, right? Just as, as easy as clicking a button on your phone and the loan can be in your pocket. One click loan, simplifying process for lenders, simplifying process for consumers using all of the technology and data that we have and leveraging that for a better experience creates happy customers and more profitable businesses. So that's all I have for today. Um, but I will be at the iCommission's Speakers Lounge if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you all at the evening reception. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, join us at the Speaker's Lounge. Uh, everyone, you know, we're really, we're thrilled we have great weather tonight for the evening reception at 6 p.m. at the Osceola Courtyard by the pool behind the lobby. Um, it should be fantastic. Tomorrow, uh, the breakfast will start a little bit earlier at 7 a.m., 7 to 8. Great networking breakfast. And then uh, we have two keynotes uh, in the morning, John Alzheimer and uh, Rashna Bhatt from uh, Barclays, um, and then we have the, um, the pro networking session and more expo hours. So I know it's really hard to tear everyone back in here uh, after networking. So tomorrow we're actually gonna end with networking and it's not too late to do two things. One would be um, make some requests for meetings. Uh, there's 12 different pro networking sessions. And the second thing is not too late for is to sign up for the um, for the Capital One scholarship. So everyone, not just freelancers, but self-employed people who write about credit and credit cards uh, can get your admission back uh, just by filling out that form and you are asked to recognize the sponsor Capital One for that. So uh, you can do that now, today, anytime you'd like. Um, thank you all for coming. We'll see you tonight by the pool.